Hi, welcome to Love Saranghae with Peter and Andrea. In the next 30 minutes, we'll take you on a journey into the exciting world of entrepreneurship, relationships, and the secrets behind achieving that coveted glow. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome back to another episode of Love Saranghae with us, Peter and Andrea. Today, we're going to be doing another Q&A because we have so many questions. And these are our highest performing episodes. So we see and we hear and we are going to respond. So today's first Q&A, Peter, I'll start and then I guess you can do the next one. Customer is Kristen C. And her skin type is combination skin. So she probably has a T-zone that's oily, and then her cheeks are dry. And her skin concerns are breakouts, skin tone, and wrinkles. And her age is, uh, her skin stage is mid-mature plus, so 45 to 54. And today, Kristen's question is, Hi, Sarange. I'm just learning about Korean beauty, and until now, I've never heard of the double cleansing. To me, it sounds like a lot, but it also seems like it's becoming really popular. I'm confused if everyone is supposed to double cleanse daily, or if that's for occasions when you have a lot of makeup on or sunscreen, or you're just feeling congested. If you do the double cleanse, what's the best way to do it? Do you have to have separate oil-based and water-based cleansers, or is there a product that can combine them both? What if you have sensitive skin? Should I still double cleanse? Any advice on this would be so helpful. Thank you. Okay. Well, hi, Christine. And I remember this email because I answered it personally. And it's really interesting to see because... A few years back, we never really used to get questions regarding double cleansing or Korean ingredients. They're far between, but we're getting a lot more now, which is a good uh, thing, which is, I think, a good thing. And I think double cleansing is a great question because it is kind of confusing, and I'll address it now. So, Christine, hi. So, let me just start, start by saying that nothing in skincare is an absolute necessity, and you should always do what best works best for you. Now, having said that, there is a method to the madness, and there is a, a real good reason why, or good reasons why, Koreans love their double and even triple cleanse. And I'll talk about a little bit more about that a little later on. The theory behind the double cleanse is that our skin builds up all manner of oil, sebum, impurities, dead skin, a lot of gunk during the day. Some, like excess sebum, or oil or makeup are better cleansed with an oil-based cleanser because oil binds with oil. Some, like built-up dead skin, are better cleansed with water-based cleansers. They can actually look like gel or milk-based cleansers as well, but they're not oil-based. You know, Water-based kind of encompasses everything else. So to achieve a full cleanse before applying any correctives, serums or creams, the Koreans believe a double cleanse is an absolute necessity. And if you look at the number of products in K-Beauty, you'll see that you take a one brand, even like Iope or any other brand, they'll have a, an extraordinary number of cleansers versus like serums and creams. Cleansers are the thing in Korea. So let me give you a few scenarios and what cleansing method fits. Number one, if you lean towards heavier makeup or sunscreen most of the day, then yes, you should be double cleansing, which, which, which is probably the most of us, right? It will help clear your pores. Two, if you have combination to oily skin type, you should consider the double cleanse as well. The good news is that you don't need to have two separate steps like in the past. So the Sarangye Nourishing and Moisturizing Oil to Foam Cleanser is a product built so that the oil binding action is released first and then rinsed away by the water-based cleansing action. So you get the benefits of both oil and water-based cleansing in one product. Now, I briefly did talk about a third cleansing step, and some K-beauty brands consider exfoliation as part of the complete cleansing process. And you'll start seeing more products with that theme in, the, in mind in the future. Our Sarangya 2% AHA BHA Pore Minimizing Exfoliant is a water-based chemical peel with 2% salicylic acid and 1% lactic acid. You need both. There are pr products out there that have just BHA, which is salicylic acid, or just AHA, 
but you need both to actually exfoliate completely because you need oil and water. It is designed to go even deeper into your pores and completely res resurface your skin. It is always more effective when done after a double cleansing, and that is why we consider it the third cleansing step. So you don't want to do a chemical peel before you cleanse. You must cleanse first, and then you, pe and then you exfoliate afterwards. That's the proper way of doing so. Taking into consideration your combination skin type and the concern of breakouts, I would definitely recommend you try the double cleansing routine along with the liquid exfoliation. I think the benefits are great enough for you to give it a try. And there you go, Chrissy. Yeah, I think this whole cleansing conversation is such a big one right now. It's like a hot topic. And in Korea, cleansing is like the most important step. So that's why Peter's saying there's up to three different cleansers that people use on any given night. The beauty of ours is that, and the beauty of a lot of our skincare products is that we really bringing the Korean, Korean traditions, and then we are adapting them to meet the North American standard. So in Korea, they're very used to having 13 steps each day to prepare their skin for their makeup and so on. Here, yeah, we're not like that. We're not used to doing that, and we're not going to do that. So we understand that, and that's why we've combined two steps into one to make it easier for you, but still effective. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to the second question, and I'll introduce the question, and Andrea will answer this one. Okay. The customer is Paula M., combination skin type. Skin concerns are scarring and wrinkles, and she's at the mature stage, which is about the 34 to 44 stage. And the question from Patricia is this. Hi, it's Harang Hen Aurora. I've been using the Aurora cream that I recently purchased, and I'm really loving it. So glad I took the leap into testing out your products. I have BFRB, so which stands, which is the acronym for Body Focused Repetitive Behavior, and it's different for everyone, like nail budding or hair pulling. But for me, it's skin picking. Ooh, okay. I wanted to treat myself to a facial this month because I'm turning 40. I was told that microneedling could be good for marks on the face. I'd love to know your opinion on whether this would be a good way to go for my skin condition, as well as whether or not it would be safe for breastfeeding. Also, if this isn't the way to go, what do you recommend? Andrea, what do you recommend to Paula? Hi, Paula. Thank you so much for writing. And this is such a good topic. And one of the cool things about these Q&As, I just wanted to say this before I start with the question, is that for those of you who are writing in and asking the question, this is not just for you, it's for everyone. So many people have these same questions and they're just too shy to ask, or they don't even know where to go to have these answered. So I really appreciate all of you who are writing in so that we can help you as well as everyone else who has similar concerns. Okay, so Paula, microneedling, what is microneedling for those of you who are wondering? It's basically little tiny needles that poke holes or create micro injuries into the skin. This triggers the body's natural healing process or response, which can then lead to the production of new collagen and elastin. It can be used to improve the appearance of wrinkles, scars, and stretch marks, as well as it helps to increase the absorption of your skincare products. So, I would advise if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or even trying to conceive, I would advise to stay away from microneedling. There are some small risks, infection being one of the bigger ones. So personally, I just wouldn't take the chance. It's not worth it. But it may be a good solution for you once you are done with your breastfeeding phase. The reason I say that is because microneedling is known to help a great deal with scarring by stimulating the collagen production and promoting skin regeneration, which is essentially what you wanna do. Microneedling can also help to smooth out your skin's texture as well as reduce the visibility of the various types of scars. It does take several treatments before you're going to notice any significant results, 
So try to be patient. This, this procedure, a type of treatment, really is a long game. So no matter how you choose to manage these skin concerns, even if you choose to do the microneedling, it's, ideally, it's ideal that you do both. So having a solid skincare routine, as well as the treatments, will help you to show improvements faster. The key here is consistency. So if you choose to do either or both, you need to be consistent in order to get results. It doesn't happen overnight, unfortunately. Okay, so for now, while you are waiting and you're still breastfeeding, I suggest working on improving your skin barrier in ways that are safe and effective for you and baby. A routine I would recommend for you would be a double cleanser, a hydrating toner, a vitamin C serum, a snormucin, a snormucin, Aurora Serum and the Aurora Bioactive Cream. Now I'm going to tell you why I made those recommendations. I always suggest a good cleanser and toner because there really is no point in spending all that money and time on treatments and expensive skincare, and then you're going to just put it on dirty face. There's no point. You're just clogging your pores. So the toner is considered in Korea the last step of the cleansing routine. It's the last step of the cleansing process, and it really preps the skin for the rest of the skincare routine. It's an underrated and unappreciated part of the skincare here in North America, and we're really trying to change that. The vitamin C will help to treat the scarring by increasing the synthesis of collagen, a protein responsible for your skin structure and vital for rebuilding healthy skin. The snormucin is highly regenerative and healing. So it also helps to reduce inflammation after a microneedling treatment, for example, which will, will be very good to help you through that treatment process. The reason I suggest using the Aurora Cream over the Sarange Firm and Lift here is because Aurora is has been designed to trigger the body's own collagen reproduction at any age, which is what gives you that youthful and supple skin. So I know this is a lot of information, but I'm hoping that you are now able to make an informed decision about your facial of choice, as well as start using a solid skincare routine to prepare your skin if you so choose to eventually do the microneedling treatment down the road. But as always, feel free to reach out if you have any other questions as they arise. Peter, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think the only thing I want to add is that there's nothing wrong with treatments like microneedling, resurfacing, laser, etc. They're interesting and they're kind of sexy, right? But, you know, I think most of you, I think most of our customers and, and most of our listeners understand implicitly that the road to great skin and the road to great health are the little boring things that we never, you don't really think about, like a good cleansing routine, a good moisturizer, a collagen stimulating serum. So, you know, do both if you really wish to. But the stuff that makes a real difference is the boring stuff you do every single day consistently. And then you can you can enhance that with microneedling with some of these other procedures. But as as as, as sexy as they sound, you know, you get them once a year. It doesn't make a humongous difference. It's the boring stuff. It's just, yeah. you know, as a, if I can give an analogy, as an endurance athlete myself, you know, where where I get better and where I make the real gains is not the the hard run I do once every month. It's the it's the you know half an hour to forty five minutes run I do every morning. That's that's doesn't. It's not sexy. It's it's slow. It's not you know humongously fun, but that's what makes a difference. And that's the same thing here with, with skincare. I would even like you that it's not the once a week long runs that you do. It's literally the, the little things you do with your yeah. core strength, with the, in the gym training every day, as well as those little slow runs yeah. that you don't, you really don't enjoy. You like pushing yourself. You like the feeling you get from that. But it's true. It's the everyday habits yeah. that we do that really do make 
the yeah. biggest difference in the end. It's we call it we call it stacking bricks. Yeah. Right. Just brick one brick at a time. Just keep stacking bricks. Yeah. So that's it. I think that's that's, that's a good one. All right. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks for listening to Live Sarangay with us, Peter and Andrea. If you've enjoyed this episode, leave us a review. Your ratings and reviews help more people like you find our show. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode and share this podcast with someone you think would love it. Until next time, love yourself, love one another, and love the world. Thank you.